Hello, my name is Lisa Martin from the Madison Public Library, and I am here to introduce to you the Teen Pocket Sloth. Isn't that cute? <laughs> this design is based on Andy Mora's design for the American Felt, for American Felt and Craft. Uh, the design I'm basing it off of was very simple and assumed that the people who are making it would know a lot about sewing and felt. I have updated it or made it more teen friendly or more beginner friendly. I have put it into a series of instructions and if you're interested in doing it in a kit, you're welcome to or I will just provide the email address, the website address where I got her, um, her template. But th let's turn then to what is inside of your kit because the first thing that you should see is the pocket uh, sloth template and you can see my obvious additions and then I added more words so that they would understand it. This is even updated from what you have I learned as I went so um, I will send this to Laura and make sure that anyone has access to it if you want the more updated version. So what else is in your kit and what isn't? What is not in the kit but you would would be useful to have is All right, step one, take your template and cut them out, remembering that you're only cutting out one body, but you'll trace it twice. And then do not be concerned with the dotted line on the legs or that what will turn out to be the sloth feet. I'll explain that. All cut out? Great, let's trace them. This is where your Sharpie comes in handy. When you're tracing your legs, see if you can get, you can draw that dotted line across the leg and add your B or your F to the top of it for a back leg or a front leg. If that doesn't make sense, it doesn't really matter. Again, Andy Mora didn't even add these in her template. She just assumed you'd figure it out. I think that we're all smart enough that we will, but I'll have ex, um, explanations in the written example and you'll see in a little bit how it works. Now we should all be done tracing. So you've got your eye spots and your legs, two bodies and the face. Just cut these out. Everything's cut out. Now let's start to put them in place using the little template that we have. We're gonna make sure that this, this is the most confusing part and it's not all that confusing, putting the front foot on top, see how nice felt sticks to felt, and then the back foot on top of the leg, making sure that, oops, making sure that the line and the letter are above, on top of the felt so they won't be seen when we put the other piece, the other body on top of it. The eye spots where they belong, and then on the face. We're ready to start stitching. All right, before we begin sewing, I do want to intro introduce you to embroidery thread or floss. This is DNC embroidery floss. And the fact that it is actually six strings, I don't know if you can see as I try to pull it out, uh, six strings of thread all together. So about an eight, eight inch piece of string or floss, and then you pull. This one's being tricky right now. It usually comes out right away. There you go, and you just pull the two that you want. You can either use two or three, remembering that you're gonna double it. So depending on how thick you want it, use two or three uh, of the strands. Now I'm using red because it's easy to see on camera. You, if you're, we're gonna start with stitching the eye spots on. So you would want to use the dark one. However, as I did it over and over again, you'll see that I just chose to do dark thread the whole way around. Now my daughter who's 12, she says that that doesn't look nice. She didn't like it. She preferred when I stayed with it and did the light and the, and the dark and the medium. So, but it depends on the way you want it to look or your teams want it to look. Now, in the instructions that I will send to our teams and I'm happy to share with you, I have included links to YouTube videos that show how to thread a needle. I'm not gonna go through that there. I'm gonna assume you know how. Let's start stitching. All right, starting with the face and this is where you would use a straight pin if you wanted to. Come up from the back where you should have a good knot and just do a running stitch. You can do something fancier, like a blanket stitch, but a running stitch works really well. Now,
Next, we stitch the face to the body. All right, we're going to stitch the feet to the legs now. And I realize, and I want to apologize that I got this wrong. Oh, making sure that you're going in through this side so that the knot is on the inside. Uh, I got it out of order because I'm only doing one type of thread, but you would have wanted to do the eye spots and then the legs so that you didn't have to keep switching threads so that you kept the dark thread. And then you would switch to the light thread and do the face. So I apologize for that. My stitching is horrible. It's just atrocious, but it's there. Uh, if you're doing it with teens or who are totally new, you might want to use the really light thread so it can't be seen. Or I'm all for cheating. You can totally hot glue this stuff all down. It works just as well. Here, I have. I made a teeny, teeny, tiny one, and we just use hot. I just use hot glue for the whole thing. Works, works like gangbusters. So if you're doing it in person, hot glue, it's fine. All right, and again, I apologize for getting out of order. It should be stitch the eye spots on to the face stitch the feet onto the legs, then stitch the, change the thread and stitch the face onto the, to the body. Because now we are going to go ahead and add the eyes. And that's where our toothpick is going to come in handy. Let's first start out though, grab your, grab your needle. And if you had your teens, you might even want to have them estimate where they'll want their eyes. It's at the top, in the middle or you can just go ahead and start poking a hole through with your needle, poke your hole, hole through. You're gonna go through three, I can count. Uh, you're gonna go through three pieces of, of felt. It gets really thick. So if you can see, I'm trying to push it apart and rip it open a little bit, but it's not, you can't, I don't even think you can see that hole, maybe just a tiny bit, a little better from this side. Now you're gonna to try to do the same with your toothpick really getting it all the way through. You're trying to create a hole for the safety eyes. And that's why I suggested a dull pencil because you really need to make that hole wide enough for these fairly thick stems. They look so tiny until you're trying to push them through. So, and I don't think I made it big enough, but I'm gonna work on it. If I need to, I'll even see if I can cut a little hole in it with my scissors and push it through. We can meet after we've gotten our eyes through three pieces of fabric. So I'll see you then. Okay, did you get it through? Did you get it through? Now be honest, did you do any cursing? I mean, it's so much harder than you think it ought to be. But there we go, front, and I wasn't very careful, so I hope, but this is just for example, but front and then back. There we go. And then you take your little nut and just slide it on. And now they are securely on there. They're not going to come off nice and safe. Ready to start stitching the body together. Uh, you will need your medium floss if you're going to do that. You just put the bottom or the back of the sloth and the front on top. And again, this is if you want, you haven't, you're having trouble or you have a teen who's not used to felt or any type of stitching to go ahead and secure it on. Let's stitch. I do want to remind you and your teens that before you start stitching, that you make sure that your knot is going to be on the inside. It's not a terrible thing if it doesn't happen that way. There's always ways to hide it. And if you do, you can always undo it and use a little bit of white glue to hold it all down. I'm all for cheating. Hot glue anything you want down. White glue if it's, if you don't want it to be seen, but it's going to be on the outside, go for it. Felt is a very forgiving fabric and this is supposed to be relaxing. Okay, I'm gonna stop stitching for a little bit and remember that I did not tell you that you're gonna stitch from one side and you're gonna leave a little opening in the belly. So start your stitching from one side and leave a little opening. I'm, I'm only here now at the head. My stitches look terrible. And I can't remember what I told you guys and I'm trying to be fast so that this video isn't too long, but I'm also trying to get it all in. I do not know how Martha Stewart does it. 
Thank you for being patient with me. Keep stitching. All right, I'm gonna stop the speed for a little bit to show you that I'm just stitching over the feet the way as if that was just another piece of cloth or another part of the stitch. Uh, doing a horrible job, but there you go and coming around. We probably should have started here and gone all the way around to the tummy, but we're, we're getting it. All right, all right, all right, we're getting close. So here we are with the tummy. And I can fit about two feet, two fingers in. You can also do the back. It might be a little too late to tell you that, but you can also do the back. Just really what you need to do is make sure you have an opening so that you can put your stuffing in. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put in the stuffing. There's enough, enough stuffing. And just with your fingers, oh, I lost my needle. Just with your fingers, stuff it in. Making sure that you get it into the head and the legs. With this size, it's about three inches. You can always go smaller or larger, um, depending on how you want yours to look. <clears throat> you can reduce or enlarge the template that came with your kit. But it's easy to get your feet, your fingers into the feet and stuff them in. If not, you can just use a pencil, that dull pencil that you have. Make sure that you, make sure you make it nice and light and fluffy, but you don't want to overstuff it. Another thing that you can use because polyfill can get a little spendy, especially if you're making a lot of kits. You can just use cotton balls. The polyfill is nice because it's uh, a little bit slippery. The cotton balls tend to stick to the felt, but they look just as cute. That's how I made. That's how I made this guy. These cotton balls. All right, we're gonna finish up stitching. So here we are, I finished stitching. I know mine looks super monstrous, but I'm hoping you're getting the gist. Uh, now we're going to do the toes, making him a three-toed sloth. You just take your sharp scissors and I want you to leave as much as you can because that's where we're gonna put the snap. Oh, I forgot to tell you in the beginning, you should have gotten a snap. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm probably not gonna redo it. So you'll, unless I do redo it and then you'll never know I said this, but. It's getting late, Laura needs these videos. So just two triangles right in the middle. Now you've got the three toes. Uh, I don't have the snaps. I think you guys can figure that out on your own. Just sew them with the dark thread to the dark, to the dark feet and then snap them together. That way you can hang them on a belt loop or backpack or something like that. And I do apologize. I just, they didn't come in time and I really wanted to get this video done. Now we make the face and again, the Sharpie, if you've got a very experienced teen who's good with embroidery thread, um, they can stitch their smile on. That's what I did with this one, stitch the smile and nose on, but just as easy peasy to draw it on. And mine kind of looks like a zombie one. So I think I'm gonna give them a, I'm gonna give them an open brains mouth because that's the fun of it. And then maybe I'll even put a little, Some scarring there he looks like he's a zombie and teens will have fun with it make your mistakes into something that's fun so even though he looks gruesome now I'm, I meant to make him look gruesome he's gruesomely cute adorable and your sloth is finished again switch it up make them smaller this one instead of safety eyes these are uh, little beads that I sewed on so make them smaller go ahead and hot glue it this one's even smaller and instead of a safety eyes I just used fabric paint and change up the colors. It's a lot of fun. There's lots of different variations. Um, it will be easy to kit. I'll get instructions to you. Now let's talk about Jeopardy. Let's do a super quick overview of JeopardyLabs.com, a game that you can play online, like through Zoom or in person with your teens. Just go ahead, open your browser and go to JeopardyLabs.com and it takes you to this amazing website that has pre-made Jeopardy games, or you can create one of your own if you prefer. I chose to look at the ones already made and put in animals. And you can see that there are over a thousand matches, just a ton. 
I chose this last one here. And here's the preview. You can look to see what questions there are or answers there are before you even choose the game. Go ahead and push play. Choose the number of teams that you want. So it's very adaptable. And here we're already playing a game. You go ahead, you push the, the answer. The space bar gives you the questions. You can keep track of the scoring right there at the bottom by doing a plus or a minus. Lots of fun, very easy pre-made activity or event for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about uh, sloths and Jeopardy. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at lisa.martin at cityofmadison.com. Have a wonderful summer.